solid population of native wildlife is indicative of farm health. So anything we can do to improve productivity is a good thing. And having a healthy wildlife population in and around your farm goes towards uh, achieving that end goal. Fencing is a very important part of any farming operation. It helps to contain and move stock, but fencing can also represent a barrier to the movement of wildlife across our farms. And some types of fencing, particularly barbed wire, can pose a threat to native wildlife. Over 70 different uh, Australian animals, mammals and birds are impacted by fences across our landscape. And most of these accidents actually happen on the first two lines of barbed wire on a fence. Wires have identified a number of key native species that are particularly susceptible to entanglement on barbed wire. And these include many of the nocturnal species such as grey-headed flying foxes, microbats, gliders and owls. So these particular species are vulnerable because they move across the paddock, particularly in exposed ridge top areas like this, in search of shelter and foraging for food. So not all fences are ideal for wildlife and ideal for all different stock types. So what we can do is just look at some basic specifications on a fence that'll at least make it a lot more wildlife friendly. So you don't have to replace every fence on your property. What you should do is really focus on those areas where wildlife are moving through. So landholders more than anyone know where those areas are. A situation like this, we have a barbed wire fence right on our ridge line here between two woodlots with a remnant patch of vegetation over here and a planted woodlot behind me. So this is typically a high risk area and an area where you'd be more likely to find uh, more encounters and entanglements of wildlife on barbed wire. Other high risk areas include um, wildlife corridors, areas around wetlands and creek lines and dams. Barbed wire in these situations can present a real hazard to wildlife. So when fencing near a wetland, remember to place your fence as far off the wetland as possible so you allow those larger birds to be able to take advantage of the wind and take flight off a wetland without getting caught on your fence. So over the last few years, we've been reviewing our fencing requirements on our property to put in place fencing that's both appropriate for our sheep and cattle, but also in areas trying to retrofit and where appropriate, replace barbed wire with more suitable fencing. So if in this situation you're not able to actually replace a barbed wire, there are some simple things to do to at least make them more visible. And these could include marking them with white marker tape or perhaps using a poly pipe to try and cover the barbs and reduce uh, entanglement. So any kind of protection such as some old 18 mil poly pipe was hanging around the back of the shed, that's another option to try and make this fence um, less susceptible to entanglement. Yeah, and all we have to do is, if it's thin-walled, it's good, just split it down the middle and then get a length between your droppers and just clip it on. This fence uh, is all plain wire, so that's great, particularly the first two lines, so that's, that's really important. That allows a lot of the animals that are flying through to not get caught. Ideally, it would also be good if they're 1.25 metres. That means that kangaroos are able to jump over these fences and not get caught on them. And ideally too, it would be good to have your fence a good 50 centimetres off the ground. That just means that small animals such as echidnas and snakes and wombats are able to move under your fences. So we've uh, established a few kilometres of new fencing here and that's made a tremendous impact on the vegetation. We've had fantastic revegetation and uh, we can see the evidence of that with the melaleucas, with the casuarinas coming back. But we've also used um, plain wire and that plain wire has been effective in managing our stock. So it's a win-win really. It's best for you not to go and get the animal out of your fence because it, it's really easy to damage that animal, particularly bats that have very fine skin. You could actually cause more damage by trying to get it off. So if you find any wildlife on your fence, call Wires and they could give you advice on how to manage that. And if you have any questions from here about wildlife friendly fences and you want to know where to go, just contact someone in your local land services office.